then he shall be just like someone who saw me in his wakeful state. Right? فَإِنَّ الشَّيْطَانَ لَا يَتَمَثَّلُ بِي Because the shaytan is not capable of impersonating me. The shaytan cannot undertake my form. So there's so much that is related to this hadith. What exactly does this mean? Does this mean that if you saw someone in your dream and he said he's the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam then you have seen the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam? No, doesn't mean that. Because he said the shaytan cannot take on my form. In other words, shaytan can take on another form and tell you he's the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. Right? And that is why the Sahaba radiallahu anhum, when someone would come to them and say, I saw the Prophet alayhi salatu wasalam in a dream, they would say, describe him to me. And if the description they saw in the dream matches the actual description given to us, witnessed by those who were fortunate enough to meet the Prophet alayhi salatu wasalam, may we not be barred and kept from him in al-akhirah, Allahumma ameen. But when it matches the actual description, they say, yes, you have saw him. That's the first thing you want to say. The second thing we want to say is that, what does it mean when you have saw the Prophet ﷺ in a dream? We said, at introducing this chapter yesterday, that this would be a ru'ya, this would be a bushra, this is a glad tiding, right? A gift, an honoring from Allah to assist you. Not a pure honoring means you're finished. You're done. No. So long as you remain in this life, you are subject to fitna. You are subject to trial. And so this may actually be an indication of your need for it. Not necessarily your privilege in the absolute sense compared to everybody else. You know, Ibn Taymiyyah rahimahullah says, if you think about it, why did more people see the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam? Why did more people get the privilege, the honoring karamat of supernatural assistance from Allah. Why were there more miracles basically in the tabi'een, in the successor generation, and not in the generation of the Sahaba, when the generation of the Sahaba for sure was superior? He said because the Sahaba's faith did not need help. As much as the generation after them needed help compared to the Sahaba, therefore they were given more. That's how you explain it. And so if a person saw it, تَسُرُّهُ وَلَا تَغُرُّ It should please you and help you use it as a catalyst. Capitalize on it. Invest it to get closer to Allah Azza wa Jal. And do not be deluded by it. Do not fall into the trap of shaitan which we thought I made it. And when you make it, you think you made it from a higher point, you fall harder. So we should be careful about this. The last thing is, the scholars of Ahlul Sunnah unanimously agree that no law can ever come from dreams, right? So if the Prophet wasallam, you actually saw him in the dream, and he said to you that tomorrow Ramadan starts, you're not allowed to say tomorrow Ramadan starts, right? Because just because you saw him in his form, that meant it was his image. That doesn't mean shaitan cannot cast something in your ear while you saw his actual form to mislead you, right? And so the Sharia has been perfected, the law has been finalized. The Quran and Sunnah are complete and sufficient. That is where we take our laws from, not from dreams. And over-dependence on dreams is the definition or one of the definitions of superstition, dogma, meaning baseless beliefs, and a great source of misguidance. So a person should certainly be aware of that. And Allah Azza wa Jalla knows best. Subhanakallahumma bihamdik. Shadu Allah ilaha ilan. Nastaghfiruka ratubu ilayk. Jazakallahu khairan.